the coalition. Okay, so we're going to shift gears now. So in our second segment, we're going to be talking about the Destiny 2 Curse of Osiris DLC, which Mr. Jake James Lugo has got to play. So um, JJ, take it away from here. So yeah, now if you haven't not already seen it, it just came out as of yesterday. I want to say, or yeah, either yesterday or the day before yesterday when we're recording this. Uh, the Curse of Osiris DLC is the first big DLC pack or DLC uh, content for Destiny 2. And it follows one of the bigger guardians that are part of the main story. And I know, Gary, you haven't really finished the main story of Destiny 2, but there's not really a lot of spoiler stuff here uh, in the story stuff, but but I'll try to keep it minimal. But basically, Osiris is supposed to be a really important guardian to the mythology of Destiny. And there's the, the funny thing about this is that it there isn't really... Curse of Osiris sounds like it's almost like a really negative thing about Osiris himself. Like, like you're going to be fighting Osiris or something. And that's not really the case throughout the, the missions that you actually play through. Uh, you're actually, they, they get into a little bit of time travel stuff. And to be totally honest with you, while there isn't anything inherently wrong with that, it's not something that I really gravitate towards. I have a lot of issues with time travel stories because I feel like sometimes they could be a little bit of a cop out. And especially in a universe, you know, whether it's Destiny or other sci fi universes, especially if they're sequels or follow ups to previous stories, there's always that question is like, why didn't they just go to this in the first place? And I kind of feel a little bit like that with a. Destiny Curse of Osiris as far as like what's happening with the with the actual story of that DLC in relation to the main story of Destiny 2. But that aside, overall, you're getting more Destiny 2 missions. That's basically what it is. Now, the other interesting thing that comes with the Curse of Osiris content is that there's a lot of updates and changes for Season 2 of Destiny 2, which means that you're getting new types of drops, new legendaries, new exotics. Uh, there's a new level cap now. The level cap has been increased from 20 to 25 which is pretty interesting. Bright engrams are also known as illuminating engrams now, which have completely different uh, cosmetic stuff for you to earn every time that you level up. Uh, they changed it so that way every time you level up uh, normally, like just get, gaining enough experience, you're going to get a bright engram. You're going to get an illuminating engram, which I think is interesting because had they had that uh, when the game first came out, people would have a lot more cosmetic items. And I feel like people would probably be a little bit much more eased up on the actual microtransaction stuff, the Eververse stuff, because they would have gotten bright engrams a lot more frequently. But either way, despite that, did I feel that the Curse of Osiris content was harder or anything of the sort? To be honest with you, no. And I feel like because I was a little bit overpowered when I was going through most of the content. Now, granted, one of the big issues that we'll get into in just a second is, is the prestige or the, the, the harder version of some of the missions, like including the raid. But I went into the Curse of Osiris already as like almost light level 310, like at least getting close to it. And it's pretty insane that I, in some sections I ran through, you know, just mowing down legions of enemies. So it didn't really bother me that much. What I will say, though, is that they have a cool, interesting... A boss fight towards the end of the DLC, which the way it's laid out and the design of it, I think is pretty cool. It could have been a little bit better, a little bit much more hyped up in some sections, but overall, like when you look at the entire boss fight as a whole, I think it's pretty interesting. It reminds me a little bit of some of the stuff they borrow from some of the, the raid content from Destiny 1 and Destiny 2. So I think that's pretty cool. But overall, I enjoyed Curse of Osiris for what it was. Um, does Do you feel like it encourages you to actually um, beat the DLC with, you know, a fire team, or can you breeze through it alone if you want to? No, I think you could run through it alone, especially if you've already done the raid, if you already finished the the main raid of Destiny Two, and if especially if you've already done the Nightfall a bunch of times. If you're like past light level three hundred, you're good because the minimum light level for any of the Curse of Osiris missions that are related to the story content, it's minimum two hundred. So it's really not that much. Like I know a friend of mine that I don't even think he's even finished with the main content, the, the main story of Destiny 2, and I think he's already like trying to get into it, at least trying to play some of the Curse of Osiris DLC. I don't know how that is because I don't know if it restricts you from playing it. Kind of like in the previous Destiny game, it restricted you from getting into the DLC missions without playing and finishing the main content, the main story. So I don't know how that works. But even if you're like not light level 300, I mean, you should be fine. Like it, it never once... At any point, I never once felt like I had to bring at least another person or two other people with me. Okay, so does it feel like a complete DLC pack, or like do you feel like the story's a bit lacking, but the stuff that you get, the equipment you get from it, is what makes it worth it? 
now, as far as loot drops and, and weapons and equipment, I feel like, you know, it, it's standard fare for Destiny 2. You're going to get new legendaries. You're going to get new exotics. Apparently, one of the exotic guns is broken in PvP. I, I think, I forgot, it starts with a P, but it's a, it's one of those tracer rifles, kind of like Cold Heart, but I believe it's a solar version of it. And the problem is, is that apparently it, it shipped out with a bug where it almost instantly kills players in PvP. So PvP right now, especially uh, the Trials content or the, the competitive modes, are broken broken so there, there's almost no point to going into the crucible at this point unless you have that gun with you and even then from my, my understanding from what i've seen online it's not fun whatsoever but getting back to single player content if you know as far as getting into the raid or getting into any of the other adventure stuff it's it's standard fare for destiny 2 what i will say though which i think is a little bit annoying and i think that they should change is that the prestige version harder version of the raid that is locked behind the curse of osiris dlc so if you don't have the dlc if you didn't get the season pass you can't join in on the harder version of the raid which i think is kind of stupid i don't think i'm not necessarily think that's a good thing because the raid itself is not part of the curse of osiris dlc so why lock that harder difficulty behind the paywall i think that's stupid but maybe you know there's there's probably has something to do with some of the drops that you're going to get from that uh version of the raid which to me i can understand that but even then i feel like you know a lot of the extra updated stuff for the curse of osiris dlc or just the extra loot drops you're going to get you don't even necessarily need to have the curse of osiris dlc in order to get that update so you're still going to get some of those drops even though you're not going to be able to play that curse of osiris story content so it could be a logistics thing for all i know but that's like probably my only one complaint about the dlc Okay, so and how long did you say it took you again to complete the story? I would have to say maybe under an hour. Now, understand that's because I was vastly overpowered. I'm already over light level 300 at this point, getting to close to like 310. So if, if you're within that range, if you already played a bunch of Destiny 2 and you're already up to that level of light level or power level, then you're going to run through this in a much shorter amount of time than anybody else would. Now, in all honesty, because of that, it probably felt a little bit shorter than some of the previous DLCs we've seen from Destiny 1. Uh, again, I would be interested to see like a comparison between the two as far as like game time is concerned. But I don't think that necessarily is like a detriment to the DLC as far as the story content, because as far as lore is concerned, there is more cutscenes, there is a little bit more backstory, and you are seeing another character, which is a pr pretty big component of the overall story to Destiny, uh, you know, as far as the universe is concerned. So if you're into that type of stuff, you're going to get a lot out of it. But just for me personally, I wasn't a fan of the time travel stuff. I think maybe, you know, they could have handled it a little bit differently. And it is kind of a little bit kind of marketed a little bit wrong as far as like the curse of Osiris. You're not necessarily fighting Osiris. You're, you're kind of helping him out and kind of doing other stuff related to the to the worlds of destiny 2 oh and you're also into the what is it you get a new location you can visit which is the lighthouse on mercury which originally from the previous game was an exclusive area you get to go to from trials of the nine or just the, the trials of mode and crucible but this time you actually get to go visit it oh that's cool um so like for the people who didn't get uh you know the um season pass the actual standalone price of curse of osiris is a uh, 1999 so would you say it's worth that and does it have enough content to uh... i think i think it's worth it it has enough content if you're already into destiny 2 if you're going to be playing destiny 2 a lot already like you probably have been then it's totally you're totally going to dive into this no matter what because you're going to want to keep up with the rest of your clan mates you're going to want to keep up with the rest of your fire team and be able to play all the future content that's going to come because this is the first of many that are going to come there's still going to be other DLC content probably into next year that more than likely it's going to encourage you to have played this previous DLC before you get into that one down the line. Because from my understanding, after having talked with Bungie while I was at their offices, they're working on other content. Like they're, they're working on a bunch of stuff. So is it worth it for that? Yes. Now, is it worth it for the person that plays casually? That's debatable as far as that price point. Uh, because, again, it's standard fare for any uh, DLC that's released out like that. Again, especially one that has multiple DLC packs that are going to come out for the game. So I would say that if you're interested in the lore of Destiny and you're interested in keeping uh, up with all the loot drops and the changes with the game, then, yes, it's totally worth it. If you're not going to be diving into it too, too much, then maybe you might want to skip out on it and wait till either the next DLC pack comes out or if when a, a complete version of the game comes out much later next year or the following year. Okay, fair enough. Sounds good. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you wanted to add on that? Overall, for me as a player, I, I enjoyed it. For what it was, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm curious now 
based off of like how the ending of the main story for Destiny 2 ended without getting into spoilers for, for, for Gary and anybody else that didn't play it. I'm curious to see if the next DLC content or the following one, because there's, there's going to be multiple, if they get into that type of stuff. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about, Gary, when you finish the campaign. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So it, it's kind of confusing seeing what's involved with this DLC, with Curse of Osiris, based off of that. So who knows? Maybe we got some bigger things coming next year. Cool. So yeah, I'm definitely going to focus on um, actually beating the game, and then you know, I'll definitely consider jumping into Curse of Osi- o- Osiris. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for now, I guess. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely be covering Destiny Two a lot more in the future as more content drops for it. So I've seen it at PSX. Out. I'm going to PSX now. They're going to have De- Destiny Two over there as well. Oh yeah, yeah. JJ's getting ready for his flight right now. So yeah, um, look out for more information on um destiny 2 in the coming days i guess because you know we'll yeah. have some shows some podcasts and um jj will definitely talk about that a little bit so look out for that until then have a safe flight jj and um peace out to all the listeners take it easy everybody see you